What's up you guys, 11 Flex here, today I'm back doing another review um, I've been gone for about a week but actually I haven't been gone like from YouTube in really long because I did schedule a video right in the middle and um, I don't really post that often anyway so it wasn't that much difference anyway but yeah I hope you weren't waiting too long I imagine my 4 subscribers were tentatively waiting over their refresh buttons for my new video but yeah let's get into it so today's review is going to be another retro collection figure review here we go in the special packaging. Um, it's going to be the Green Goblin. And there we go, it looks pretty good in there. I um, can already see those eyes are going to annoy me. But yeah, it's nice to be in a retro review as my last one did really well. Um, it's done the best of my channel so far. Not in terms of views, but in terms of watch time, etc. So yeah, um, here he's in the thing. Green Goblin written there. Nice picture on the billboard. Um, nice logo up top. It's obviously the animated series style design. Check out the other characters on the back. Get a interchangeable head sort of demonstration. Um, you get a read up and a picture. So yeah, let's open this up. So I again did my technique that I did last time, and I think it works a lot better this time. Uh, I used scissors instead of a Hawkeye sword, <laughs> um, and yeah, I think it cut through the paper a little bit better, so it's not as messy on the inside. So yeah, that's good. So here you do get a nice cardboard insert for the glider, which just goes like that, which is pretty nice. So in terms of accessories with this figure, you do get the Norman Osborn alternate hair sculpt, which looks pretty nice. The hair sculpt looks very accurate. Same with the head sculpt, looks pretty good. And then you also get a pumpkin one, which is nice to see. For example, the Demon Goblin builder figure didn't come with any sort of bomb. So this is nice to see. I'm sure, like I was saying, uh, yeah, um, pumpkin bomb looks pretty nice. Bit of paint there, I'm not even sure what that is, look. I think it's supposed to be smoke in the green, but it's gone to the orange. So it looks a bit odd, but the green in there looks nice. It's pretty nice to paint one. And then also the biggest accessory, obviously, the glider, which is uh, looks pretty accurate to the show. Although, to be fair, I didn't really watch it much because um, I was kind of past that at that time. I'm a bit beyond that era, but yeah, um, it looks pretty nice. Nice metallic. There's a bit of marbling around certain areas like on the these pieces a little bit but not too much an issue and you do get that nice hole in the bottom to, ship, to plug into the peg which I'll show you later and here is the figure itself out of the packaging looking really nice already a very comic slash animated series vibe um yeah pretty nice I mean instantly the eyes are very obvious not 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 100% correct at all way too big, way too sort of doughy, um, not great, I probably won't bother customing it or anything, but yeah that is a bit irritating. Yeah if those eyes were just a little bit smaller, um, the head sculpt would be really great as you can see, the nice yellow teeth and the gum detail is nice, um, I think these two bits are separately moulded pieces so there's no issues with paint on there, um, but there is no issues on the eyes or mouth either which is nice to see, I'm pretty good. Um, this does stick out quite a lot, should be good for sort of flying scenes on the glider um, sort of pictures, nice very big long ears as you can see there yeah, little chin as well, sticks out quite far very goblin-y looking face and then moving down we have this ascot sort of looking piece um, it's obviously not, it's just I believe it's supposed to be sort of wrinkles around his neck but it's very it's very loose on mine and there uh, comes up a bit so it does look a bit, it look a bit like he's wearing a ascot or a scarf of some sort, which is a bit annoying. But if you kind of push it down, it does look all right um, for poses and such. But yeah, just playing it, it is always going to show that underneath. And if you lift that up, it is just very basic outline under there. It doesn't look great. And then moving down, this bit is very plain. Um, nothing very detailed about that. And then the belt, again, very plain and simple. Um, there's a sort of, sort of buckle sort of thing, which just um, it looks like it just raised a bit and there's like a score through it. And this side does look a little bit smaller than the other. So that is a bit annoying, but it doesn't look, it's not really noticeable from far away or anything. And then you get the arms. Again, this just moulded, scaly green, looking really nice. And you get these big, uh, wrinkly, sort of loose gloves do look pretty good all the way up and then moves down to the hands 
and the sculpt on there, it's nice, yeah, showing the quite wrinkly and everything, and then same on the side, and moving down the legs, same again as the arms, um, they still, still look pretty nice though, boots, same as the Demogoblin boots, um, yeah, colours, colour on this figure is a bit, um, it's very sort of exotic, very in your face, you know, the pink and green, and I mean if you took this off, if you took the bag off, I mean, that does just seem like a handbag piece, doesn't it? It's like a purse or a handbag. But yeah, um, going on the detail on it. Looks like a pretty nice sculpt. And then you do get this silver buckle painted, which is quite nice. You don't get any painted detail on here, which would have been a nice add, but not really that important. So yeah, the sculpt on there is quite nice. And you can, as I showed, just slip it on and off, just like that. And it is a bit loose, it doesn't like... It doesn't like fit in anywhere specifically um, so sometimes it does sort of go up like that and look a bit odd but you can make it look really good on there so yeah and then the pumpkin bomb it fits into the hand like this you just sort of place it on it doesn't sort of fit so you kind of you can kind of place it like that which looks pretty good or it did just fall off uh, it literally just took me 10 minutes to find this pumpkin bomb after it fell on the floor so uh, be careful like I said, you can place it like that and it looks alright, but you have to try and like jam it in and then you can get it held properly. So that looks pretty good. Same on this hand. Um, just like that. Or sort of place it or you can sort of jam it between these two fingers. And yeah, it yeah, does look pretty great. Wish we had like a sort of fiery version with the Demon Goblin builder figure. And then for the head swap, just pop it off. And you can see the, just the basic one sided ball joint just pop this head on a little bit stiff uh, yeah I think that's on yeah it's a bit stiff but looks alright when it's on which I think that's a good likeness but obviously it does look a little bit odd but that's more of a character because you know you've got this serious sort of businessman head sculpt and then it's just very flamboyant green and pink but it does it is accurate to the character and it does scale pretty nicely. Now you can take one of these pretty uh, kind of standard Hasbro stands. Um, they came with the Demon Goblin um, glider, as you can see, and I believe they came on a Star Wars um, Black Series. I think it was a I forget the name, a speeder bike. Sorry. And then yeah, so you just get this stand, plug into the hole down there. Oop, that one doesn't want to go in. It's a bit tight. Okay, so um, this is annoying. I did get it in, but it came out again, and I don't want to keep messing with it because, as you can see, it did really badly bend this. Um, it's bent in quite a few places, so I might have to pick up another white rabbit figure to get a new <laughs> one of these stands. And at least I'll have two. But yeah, this hole is a little bit tight. I will try again, but I don't want to break my stand. Okay, so I managed to get it in on this one because it's easier to support, so I, so I don't want to bend and snap this bit, um, which it already has done, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, there you go, the stand on there, like that. Um, it does does work quite well, although on this one it did pop out as soon as I moved it, but I don't think that's happening on this one. So I'll try and put it on a taller one of these. Okay, so I figured it out, so this is important if you have one of these. You have to put it in at an angle like this and then push in on the ball and it goes in much easier. So there, there we go, and I think that looks pretty good. And I'll show you the figure on because I've already taken ages doing this. So the Green Goblin feet just hook under there. They didn't fit in, like slot in quite as well as with the Demon Goblin one as it had full feet slots. This one just has the hooks, but it should hook onto these a little bit. And with a little bit of posing and moving about, you can make it look nice. So yeah, this stand actually does work really well for this figure. Um, I think it even works even better than the Demon Goblin figure um, because it's lighter, so it doesn't put as much strain, doesn't fall over as easily. As you can see, I can move it around and it does stay up quite well. Other than the Demon Goblin figure, which did fall over constantly. So yeah, the smaller stand I think works a lot in its favour. Yeah, I think that looks great. I do wish this figure now came with one of these stands but it would be, I think, impossible to fit inside of the packaging just because of the angles. So yeah, you can't really blame Hasbro on that one. 
um, well kind of but yeah there's not any way you could fit this in the packaging um, so yeah there isn't really a way to fit that in but I'm slightly irritated I'm going to have to shell out another um, 15 to 20 quid for a whole new white rabbit figure just to get this stand again um, but you know it does look really great when I pose it properly so yeah um, if you don't have one of these stands from another figure you can just try and use one of these um, but mine will hold the weight like that if I went forward it won't hold the weight um, my other one probably would have but again both of mine broke so I'm not buying any more of them as they were £15 each but you know one of these I think these are 2 or £3 each you can there you go get them up like that uh, it does look better on one of these stands but if you don't want to buy one of those you can just use one of the normal action figure stands and it still looks good ok so for articulation the head moves back that far and forward that far I think it is a little bit hindered by this neck piece as you can see but yeah the range of movement is not too bad could be a little bit further back but it's not that necessary arms get up that far um, I do remember, I think that I remember the Demon Goblin figure reaching higher but it's the same mould so I don't know if there was a issue with the sculpting on the mine and I managed to push it past but that, that's how far it goes in this one the arms go all the way around like that they do click click into place but it's not much of an issue and then you do have a bicep saw double joint elbow although it is hindered by the glove piece there's no swivel here although there could be because it's a separate moulded piece the hands do swivel around even with the sort of cuff bit over there they bend forward that far backwards that far they are hindered on the back movement because of this piece the ab crunch is forward that far which isn't actually very far but not too much of an issue, it's not hindered by anything as you can see um, grooves back that far uh, so yeah the back crunch is quite far very far, I actually prefer if the forward was more though um, than the back because when he's on the glider it's nice to have him, his head pointed up and his you know, um, chest crunch forward so the back one isn't quite as useful so yeah I would like it if it had more forward eye crunch but then you get a 360 waist swivel leg stick out that far which is not very far but it's not too bad um, he's not the sort of character that needs to do too many like split poses and um, the kick forward that far which is good backwards that far um, which is you know not very far at all but it's pretty pretty standard and you, know, you get the full 360 thigh swivel it's a bit stiff because I haven't really um, worked it much yet but it's fine and then you get a double jointed knee not hindered by anything um, anything like that and you get the 460 boot swivel uh, feet men for back that far, forward that far and you get the ankle pivot chair overall, uh, articulation is alright um, it's similar to all the sort of figures with this mold in terms of the arms and legs uh, yeah like I said I wish it would crunch forward a little bit more um, but yeah it's not too much of an issue or anything like that um, not really you know it's not it's not you know amazing articulation like the spider-man or anything but it's not it's not, it's not particularly bad at all so yeah, um, I'm happy with it. And you can put the um, the Spider-Man web accessory over the shoulders, and it looks pretty good. Um, it might be a little bit wear with the bag off, but yeah, it does look all right. I haven't tried the face piece, but yeah, I think that that works pretty well. Um, maybe it looks a bit odd from certain angles, but yeah, overall, it does look really good like that. And yeah, I just want to say these effects pieces are really great. I'm really glad that they come out of these. Accessories like this would be great um, to have, like in a sort of just an accessories pack, like um, DC Multiverse have done before, where they just have an accessories pack. Um, and I really think that would be good for Marvel Legends to do. Uh, they could have just like a big one, or they could have like themed ones. Do you know what I mean? Like Spider Man, you know, etc. So yeah, I think that could be something that would be great in the future. Um, I doubt I doubt Hasbro are going to see this video, but if they do, think about it. Uh, now let's have a look at some comparisons. Now the probably the most important comparison, the uh, Retro Collection Spider-Man. And yeah, these do look really good together. Can't wait to start taking some pictures of them, which you will see in a minute. And now for another pretty cool comparison. Uh, it's the Demon Goblin builder figure that I reviewed um, most recently, it reviewed just before this one. And yeah, there are a few similarities. Um, this part is the arm, I believe it's the same mould um, and then obviously where it cuts there 
is where you know they ch the hands change. I was actually just noticing, as you can see, the 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 scale pattern fades out there, which I didn't actually notice when I had it before. But yeah, look, it, then it goes flat. So I think because these bits go higher, they molded it to stop there, but then these bits are open. So that's pretty interesting. I never noticed that before. Um, that's pretty strange. But anyway, yeah. Um, the boots are the same mould but not the legs or anything I think the torso is also the same mould as well uh, uh, it might be, yeah it looks to be but then obviously the belt is different and the, this he has obviously clothed legs whereas these are not so the legs are different moulds um, but yeah pretty nice comparison I think they sort of work together in a comic -y, in like a comic sort of aspect um, although they do look like different styles I guess as you know it's a very like you know sort of rough demon version he's very I guess he would look sort of friendly with those big doughy eyes and all the colours yeah so yeah again I didn't really wish those eyes were different but yeah, um, yeah I do think they work together though um, in terms of like design the style is very similar so I do think they work together as I thought I'd do a glider comparison as well um, you know very different very different sorts of glider you know this is like a supposed to be a real sort of mechanical glider whereas this is just a demonic sort of fire glider um they're both nice uh it's hard to choose which one i prefer i mean this one is like very bulky and it's made of like very thick plastic and the whole flame it looks really cool but then this is like i mean i guess it's more it's a bit more compact it's easier to pose it's easier to bump on the stand and everything because it's you know it weighs a lot less and I guess it I think it's, I mean it's easier to sort of use on the figures hard to explain but because it's so light you can sort of pose it much easier this big heavy one you know it's much harder to get in a nice pose so I'm not sure which one I prefer um, as I do a lot of you know changing poses and everything I guess it'd have to be this one but in terms of look it might have to be Yeah, overall, really nice figure. Can't wait to start posing around with the retro collection of Spider Man. And yeah, I just wanted to say, um, it's nice to have a, another Green Goblin from Marvel Legends, as we don't see a lot of those recently, especially as sort of MCU has leaned away from Green Goblin. I can see why. I mean, every sort of Spider Man iteration doesn't want to, like, you know, go over the same ground. So in the first one, you know, there was Green Goblin, Venom, um, Sandman, and then was it new goblin so then in this in the second version they did lizard and electro but then again they did do green goblin again so in the mcu they went for vulture it was never done before but now they're probably not going to do you know green goblin for a few movies because they obviously want to be different so they did mysterio and now they're doing who knows for no way home who knows what the actual you know the main villain will be as all we know so far it's just it's gonna be about multiverse so yeah, i would like to see MCU Green Goblin as we barely have any Green Goblins um, recently we did have that one a few waves ago which was um, I think the same mould but sort of recolored. we might have had a different head sculpt and it was a sort of darker version it wasn't so it wasn't like the retro collection or anything so yeah um, overall yeah great figure uh, thanks for watching after this I'm going to be starting the Venom Builder figure wave um, Venom Pool sorry Builder figure wave as well as doing some extra Venom stuff that isn't part of the wave so yeah stay tuned for that Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.